and we are recording. So we can start the meeting. Hopefully more people will join. This is an ITF meeting and the note will apply since we have a new, a new participant today. Um, yes, so first item on the agenda, something that I forgot to put on was about the uh, conflicts for the Singapore meeting for CBOR. Uh, so me and Jim have started talking about this. We have uh, a couple of working groups that we have added so far. Uh, we like at least our, you know, um, editors and uh, more active participants to tell us what their conflict is if if they are not already covered. Um, so. Carsten, take a look. Yeah, I, I'm just uh, looking at the list we have in Cibor. I think it's a, a really good idea to uh, actually go through this uh, list in the interim. Uh, I have never had the idea. <laughs> so that, that's yeah. great. Um, so the, the, we have a current conflict with um, so, for instance, things like ACE. It, it, if you're seeing the, <coughs> sorry, if you're seeing the Etherpad, you should uh, you should see the what we have added so far, me and Jim. Yeah, and and I I'm just uh, bringing up ACE. Oh, okay, so th that's already covered from the chair conflict. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there was a couple of working groups that were there before when I did uh, when I checked all the working groups that were actually using Cbor before. Uh, but I don't know if they're still using Cbor, if they're still interested, if they, they will still want to participate. And these that did not make this list where I'm going to copy paste at the end. Second DTN dots roll. Um, so, uh, one thing to uh, look at is uh, the list of documents that are uh, referencing um, RFC 8610 and, and its uh, uh, prerequisites, uh, uh, precursors, uh, or uh, 7049. So, Data Tracker gives you this, this list of documents that reference something. And that essentially gives you a very, very good overview of who's actually using I did that, if you remember. I did that before. And they're basically those that I am. Um, good. Uh, Reference by. Let's see. It was also about do we take all of the uh, individual document or just the working group document. Yeah, that, that's a good question. If the data but, packet information. But at this point, I think, at this point, what I would like for you to look at is um, um, take a look at this. Is there anything yeah. that you see that you will? Well, I have no idea yeah. if there will be a, a web packaging thing, uh, but eventually Jeffrey will project web packaging over mm -hmm. uh, what we do. And I think that that's also a technology overlap, different from loops. OK. So we have red there, that, that would be Lawrence's. Uh, we can put it yeah. in as well. Yeah. Even if it's repeated above. Yeah. Hank, of course, is, is red and second. Good to know. I think Paul is not in this list. He should be. be. 
and he sh I think he's the DNS op. Yeah, that that was the one that, that stopped him from being around in Montreal. Yeah. Yeah, true. DTN, like a um, <laughs> the the <they use Siva. laughs> Like this, where this uh, below are those that um, Sakam DTN dots and roll were those that were included in the previous, and I don't know how relevant they are anymore. So I just want to check. Yeah. Are these still relevant? Uh, DTN has pretty much completed the, the uh, version two of the bundle protocol. Uh, so, okay. um, but I think th th there are some interesting people in, from the DTN com community, um, like the the chair. What's his name? Taylor. Roger Taylor. Robert Taylor. Um, so, that that would be a priority three thing for me. Mm -hmm. But BTN, you said it's completed. Are they meeting or? They have completed their their second version bundle protocol. I I don't know what's currently on on their plate. Okay. But the, the bundle protocol was the one that that had the the CDL in it and uh, the receiver. And I'm sure they they are going to extend this in some way. Okay. If you don't see anything else, I think we can uh, stop here for now and uh, hopefully get more input. Michael, it's good to get yours as well. Yeah, but one group that we maybe should watch is AP WAN uh, because uh, they they may get into a phase where they actually want to use Kiba, but maybe they are using Kiba through Yang Kiba. Um, yeah, with I mean, yeah, this is the the conflict, uh, not the uh, I don't know. We we have to make a, a choice at some point of yeah. Uh, how many working group? So yeah, okay. What about dots and roll? So Michael, I see that you're yeah. There will be a conflict for you. Well, I should be going to roll too. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit of a conflict for me as well. I, I have repeatedly not done this, uh, but maybe at some point I should again. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. Well, then we can move on to the next item on the agenda. So it's the civil array tag st status. So it's right now in last call, which ends the 5th of September. So I think that's exactly when you're going to be gone on location, Kasten. <laughs> right. And there is only one one of the three reviews, uh, the general yeah reviews that are, is done right now. And the one that is done, I think, had no no comments at all. So I mean, no, no, no issues at all. So that's good. Um, yes, I just wanted to mention this. And we can pass or we can talk about the CBOR sequence document. Uh, the working group last call ended today. And hopefully we, we, we said that during last interim that today we will discuss any issue that the working group last call would create. So I saw there is a couple of reviews. And if you want to discuss those, Carsten, if there is anything that you need input or you would like to um, um, have a yeah, clarification so over. What, what I actually did was um, I, I made pull requests for all these uh, comments. I think, or oh, there, there's one issue left. Oh yeah, the, the broken formatting, that we cannot fix that. Um, it's not a pull request, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, there is a branch 
that has what is that? Maybe you didn't push it. That that would would be very typical of me. Um, <laughs> <let's take that. laughs> Really weird because I thought I remember looking at it too. Oh, well, maybe you weren't. I, I did it in master. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so <laughs> that th there, there are a number of commits here uh, that, that are addressing the, the various uh, comments, uh, okay. and I think they, they are all straightforward, no-brainer, except. And so we can discuss whether the, the actual wording uh, that, that I use is, is uh, the right one. Uh, but I think uh, there's no discussion needed about the actual comments. OK, good. So I guess this is an AP on everybody to check this, or the, the reviewer, at least, to check that uh, what you wrote is, uh, is good enough. Yeah, so traditionally, at least Jim and John should at some point say, yes, that's addressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anybody else uh, wants to read that, that's great. And yes. uh, I, I definitely want to submit this uh, on Monday, uh, the latest. Yeah. Karsten? Yes? Um, as I remember, John sent out a piece of mail really, really recently. Really, really? Um, on the 20th? No. This one? August 20 or August 24th. And I wrote some. August 24th, probably. 24th. I think that, that was. Sorry, I that when you did. <laughs> That was okay. the trivial, I, but I, he, I thought I remember seeing one after that, and maybe I didn't. I will have to go find it. Yeah, if, if I missed anything, I, I still would like to know that. So as chairs, you have to review the mailing list anyway. So uh, please uh, tell me as soon as possible uh, if I missed anything. OK, sounds good. Thank you. So, so the, can, when when do you need the submitted version? Um, Before you leave. Yeah, yeah but th that means Whenever if you find something submitted in there, I can't fix it. Um, yeah. I I will probably sit down and and review stuff either today or tomorrow. Okay. So I will try to get it submitted on on Friday. So we have. Uh, some uh, time to to react to unforeseen things. Okay. You said good. Monday, or? Is it again? I maybe I understood and didn't understand correctly that I heard Monday before that you wanted to submit an update. Yeah, but I think I want to do it on Friday. Okay. So maybe you should uh, uh, announce at some point that the bus call has passed, that those changes are in the repository where I did this on last Monday, uh, the day before yesterday already. But to just announce that it's uh, formally passed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, sorry about doing that to the master. No, no it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> it's just good to know where they are. <laughs> yeah, but you see, it created confusion for me, so you have to create confusion for us. <clears throat> good. Okay, so we can move on to Fibor. So you. you you have the action point to get the reviewers to look. Yes. Yes. Good. Uh, that's going to be easy because one is Jim and the other is uh, in my office, so I can just poke him. <laughs> 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 okay. So let's 
go to your wish. Oh, actually, uh, I have uh, one quick report uh, to make. Well, maybe I could do this in any other business, so to my slide number three, uh, which is we have handled the, the tag 42 uh, issue. The Yang Subo now uh, says it uses 47, and that's reflected in the INA registry. And the IPR, the IPFS people uh, have actually written up their tag registration. They had do that, done that two years ago, but for some reason it got stuck. And uh, it's a nice example uh, that you should make sure that your registrations don't get stuck because somebody will step on your feet. Okay, so I think uh, we, we demonstrated our flexibility here. And Nice. So, uh, Cibobis. Um, Paul submitted uh, uh, Dash 07, uh, which is basically just uh, a checkpoint uh, because there there was a ton of editorial uh, changes. And uh, when, when we now start making technical changes again, it's, it's very confusing to have all these editorial changes in a diff. So that's the main reason why there is a Dash 07 um, out there. And when you review that, the, the point really was to get the tag terminology uh, right. And uh, I have uh, some more slides about that uh, later. Uh, we have one outstanding pull request. Uh, that's the, the negative test vectors, the test vectors that are not well formed. And um, I must admit that uh, exactly happens what, what I thought would happen. It's kind of a weird list. It's not like quite clear why are things in there or not in there. Um, and I really would feel much more comfortable if we had a good place where we uh, can put a test suite, and then we could make this much more complete than we would make it uh, in, in a document. Um, so I, I would uh, prefer not to do this, or to do this in, a, in an even less comprehensive way, with maybe one or two examples per, per category. Um, so uh, we, we can point to some a repository for the test suite that, that we think will be stable enough uh, for a decade or half a decade, uh, so people can use that. That that would be my proposal for uh, handling this pull request. That tends to be the way I'd rather go to, simply because it's a lot easier to. A, it's a lot easier to fix mistakes, and B, if you find you missed a corner case, I don't really want to update the standard to deal with that, but if people think that that is a comprehensive suite, then they won't see it. Yep. They won't see that updated. And I actually wrote a test for the uh, half-length floating point that just includes all the numbers there are, uh, because you can do that for 16-bit for uh, space. And we wouldn't do that in RFC, but we can easily do that on the test suite uh, in the repository. So I, I think it would be a good idea to, to really do this test suite uh, thing. And this means that we actually have to do task number 16 that, that's in the issues list now. Yeah, Lawrence is, is uh, conveniently not there. So you probably have to take this to the list. OK, so, so much about the pull requests on the issues. Um, as I said, the, the main item was the tag terminology update uh, for Dash 07. That, that's issue number 85. Uh, I haven't closed that yet because I think the, the uh, this still needs review whether we correctly did this. Uh, so basically, um, the idea is to 
uh, uh, make it more clear that we have three kinds of containers in uh, CBOR. We have arrays and maps, obviously, and we have tags, which is a very special container, which just combines a tag number and an enclosed item. So when we talk about arrays, we have a word for the things that go into the arrays. These are elements. And when we talk about maps, we, we can say member or key value pair. And we, we didn't really have a great term for the thing that goes into a tag. Uh, Why we said tagged item, uh, but then also the, the whole thing is a tagged item. So this is, uh, this can be very confusing. Um, so we now say enclosed uh, item. And I think this, this requires one, one more round of going through the uh, text and making sure we, we hit uh, everything. But I think the direction is, is pretty clear. And I haven't uh, heard anyone disagreeing with the direction yet. So the, the next technology issue that I think we need to uh, fix um, is uh, the, the well-formed versus valid versus valid uh, situation. Um, I think we have a pretty good handle on the well-formedness um, issue. I, I haven't done a full reread uh, yet on, on that issue, but um, I think we, we are pretty much done with that. Uh, what we haven't really done very well is uh, talk about validity and how this is both a, a CBOR concept and an application uh, concept. And um, I think what, what we really need is some, some better terminology that, that uh, separates the, 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 the kinds of validity here. So th there is some basic CBOR validity. Um, but there are also application aspects that enter basic capability. So if you are talking about duplicate map keys, th there is an application view on what actually is duplicate that influences the CBOR validity chain, but which is a bit weird. So uh, yeah, the, the terminology is, is not easy there. And then of course there is the, the set of expected inputs that the application wants. You could call this valid or expected. Uh, so I would really uh, love to get good terms, well-formed and valid, of course, are stolen from uh, XML, which were the, the which they were uh, invented for. And uh, nobody really has done this uh, civilization format valid versus application valid. Uh, thing yet, so we may have to invent a term uh, here or use these um, uh, hyphenated things. Uh, I'm not sure. So if you have any ideas on, on how to call these things, that, that would be really useful. So maybe I, I should uh, send out a short message about that and uh, uh, promise a beer to the winning proposal. Yeah, I got nothing. Okay, and uh, then of course we, we still have this term strict, which uh, um, is actually used to talk about two different things. Uh, one is uh, validity checking, and the other one is enforcing preferred encoding. And we have to uh, separate these two forms of strict, which I call strict one and strict two. On, on this slide, uh, slide set, uh, but of course, it's better terms for that. And strict uh, probably is uh, not a very good uh, term anyway. 
Um, yeah, so I, I, once these terms are out there, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward to actually doing the uh, editorial work. I'm sure when we go to map validity, we will have some more discussions about that, handling duplicate uh, uh, keys and all that. Uh, but I think generally this, this should be straightforward to do. So uh, one other terminology issue, uh, we are often talking about data items and uh, sometimes these are about uh, model level data items and sometimes these are about encoded uh, data items. And we are doing this 146 times in, in the document. Uh, so we, we need a little bit of economy of terminology here, talking about encoded data items each time, that, that's a bit long. Um, so if we want to split these two terms, model level data items and encoded data items, um, then we probably don't want to have uh, three word or five word uh, terms for that. Is it worth it to just go to a, a TLA for encoded data item? EDI, yeah, th that's a great TLA. Well, I might use something slightly different than that. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy that we have avoided uh, TLAs uh, mostly in, in the CBA document. So um, if we can find another term that, that is uh, of the same kind as item and it's not object because that means something in JSON and so on, uh, maybe we can use that. I'm checking synonyms, but there's um unit, but that's not really component element. I think item is one of the few short terms here. Yeah. It might be good, but that, that means something different. Uh, Sorry, what? Thing. <laughs> Thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's so useful. Yeah, object is taken, element is taken. Yeah, okay, maybe we can't avoid a three letter account. Yeah. Okay, so th these are two two major technology things that, that go through the entire text and, and uh, change it. So I, I, I would be happy to do these in, in one piece uh, like we did with the tag terminology. Um, then we have uh, the, the whole issue of uh, what kind of advice we give to designers of CBOR based uh, protocols. Uh, and there are a number of issues there, some of which are really hints for good practice. And I'm not so sure how far we actually want to go there. Um, so the, the small integers as Nazis, that that's certainly something that should be said, uh, but maybe we actually have too much text for that at the moment. And then on the other hand, we have things like error handling or handling of uh, unusual cases like unknown tags and, and simple uh, uh, values. And Lawrence uh, brought up this whole thing about using tags in an unwrapped uh, way. So you just use the tag definition, but 
uh, take take the fact that this data type definition is effect uh, from the context and not not from a physical tag. Uh, so I, I wrote some text on on the mailing list, but that, that text is still very raw. Um, yeah, if you have any opinion on that, I would love to hear that. How much sense would it make to pull all of this out and put it into a BCP? A lot of sense, because that BCP could uh, actually change over time. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's part of why I was thinking about it, is, is if that's an updatable document. Yeah, but then some security considerations probably need to be in the main document. Right, but things like 68, 67. Yeah. And and the the, the unwrapped tags, tag, unwrapped tags versus wrapped tags, all seem to be more than a BCP sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. Why don't we put that out on the miss on the mailing list as a suggestion for handling some of this stuff? Mm -hmm. and see what sort of reaction we get. Yeah. Okay, the the tag processing model, Peter Oxel, I have no idea how to say his last name. Uh, pointed out that we have these weird tags 25 and 29 that, that really need to be processed during decoding. Uh, and um, yeah, that, that, that also could go into the DCP, but uh, on the other hand, it's, um, it's a little bit a part of the architecture, whether tags should be doing that or not. And I think the the agreement is that they normally should not be doing this, uh, but that that uh, it's not completely disallowed either. Um, how to handle unsupported tags? That, that's again part of the the processing model. That that certainly could go into the uh, BCP as well, and then the whole strictness in, in the strict one sense of handling tags. Uh, the structure of the semantic validity uh, model. I'm not sure this can be entirely on the DCP side because at some point we need to say what the validity of, of tags is about. And uh, then there is uh, one really interesting question that hasn't been formulated in, into an issue yet. Uh, which of the tags should not be used for discriminators? Um, so to give you an example here, uh, JavaScript, uh, recent versions of JavaScript now have uh, big ints. And in JavaScript, big ints are a completely separate universe uh, from other numbers. And that, of course, means when, when you're serializing JavaScript, uh, you want these big ends to be different uh, from, from uh, everything else. And uh, one, one idea one might have is say, oh, we, we have these tags two and three uh, for big nums. Why don't we use them for big ends only? And the, the problem, of course, is that, that other implementations uh, freely convert uh, between uh, their their inter internal number uh, formats and and uh, classic integers and big nums and and so on, so they they uh, really don't make that distinction. Big num is a bad tag to use as a discriminator in this sense, and I think we need to say something about that. Uh, in particular for big numbers because it, it's coming up now, uh, but maybe also for other things like big floats or even for type arrays, uh, it, it might be useful to 
say something about that. It seems to me that 92, a good place to put that is in the expert review instructions. Can you say that again? A good place to put to put issue 92 would be in the expert review instructions. Um, good point, yes. Ninety, yeah. I'd have to think about ninety. Yeah, I think um, the the basic idea here is the right one. We don't want to have a single strict mode, but we want to talk about ways of handling. Uh, validity and tags. And uh, to be able to do that, we need to be able to first of all talk about structural versus semantic uh, validity, but uh, there, there may be other things uh, that uh, you want of your generic uh, decoder that, that are worth uh, discussing there. So what do we note down here? Uh, yeah, and, and the, the whole preferred deterministic uh, versus the other strict uh, thing needs, still needs some editorial heat up. I think this is mostly about removing duplication between preferred and deterministic. Uh, but I think that that's also straightforward. It just needs to be done. And finally, there, there's a of course, a whole set of issues about floating point numbers. And I'm not sure that anybody else on this call cares about floating point numbers. So uh, one issue is the, the signaling NANDs, the not the numbers that uh, you can put on the wire and which are really little booby traps because uh, when, when you get the receiver to put them into your data into their data structure, at some point later in the processing, they will want to apply floating point operations on these, and then they get exceptions there. And that's about a hundred times worse than the uh, clamped uh, integer array booby trap that that we discussed. Uh, so maybe it's it's worth uh, pointing this out. Uh, somewhere. And I think that, that that's confounded a little bit by the fact that signaling NANDs are a great idea of IEEE 754 that, that unfortunately never was used very much. Uh, so most people who do something with working point numbers never have seen a signaling NAND and probably also don't really need to interchange that. So this is a little bit conflicted between the, the one objective to be able to use all of IEEE 754 because people are using all of 754 and the, the other objective to keep it simple enough uh, for most people, people who just want to encode a floating point number without becoming a floating point uh, expert. And uh, for those, uh, we have the, the proposal to just use one uh, quiet NAN. And th there's actually text in there that says you should always use this one quiet NAN. But that, that's, of course, nonsense if, if you actually um, 
want to use more of the IEEE 754 functionality like NAND payloads and SNANs and, and all that. So we have to find a balance there. And I think that the problem really is not that many people have had interoperability problems in this space yet. So even after five years, uh, it, it mostly has worked because people never read it, read it any more than that one quiet man. To me, that is sounding like the core document should say should on the QNAN. And the BCP should talk about cases where that's not true. Does that make sense? Yes. Having a BCP document is not some of these issues. Well, we probably want to have uh, uh, a short sentence in the court document that qualifies that should because otherwise we get it back from ISG. Um, yes. But the expansion of that short sentence, that could be in the discipline. Yeah, and then we have this uh, JSON to CBO uh, issue. Um, so w when you uh, write a JSON to CBO converter, uh, when do you stop recognize something as an integer? And uh, I think we want to go to uh, to the power to, to the power of 53 as the default threshold. Yeah, right there right now it says 32 or 64, and uh, 64 doesn't make a lot of sense, and 32 is uh, kind of outdated at this point. So there, there also was an interesting discussion of the related issue on the JSON uh, mailing list where, where one guy is trying to define uh, a schema language and uh, uh, his question was what, what data types do we need? And unfortunately there is no, no int, 45, uh, int 54 data type in C, so. Uh. Yeah, I was just going to mention that as having been something that didn't, that doesn't look like it's ever going to resolve itself well. Um, yeah, but I think as a right. default threshold, it's, it's only a recommendation anyway. Yeah, I mean, what I'd say is is go ahead and and put this in here and just and if we want to put more expansive stuff, we can put more expansive stuff in the BCP about it. This is this is something I don't know that we're going to see a whole lot. Well, everybody and their brother is writing a JSON to CBO converter. So that, that specific thing would, would really benefit from having a default way of doing it. Right, but it's actually the other way around, which is CBO to JSON is the problem. Oh, uh, oh I see. No, no. You're just, it, because the decision is when to use ANT and when to use float. Yeah, so th this is the, the fish sticks aquarium case. Yeah, the other one is pretty easy. Um, but w we are trying to find structure where where currently there is none. Yeah, it, I mean, it's just that, I mean, this whole thing is actually not JSON, it's JavaScript. Yes, but it's also JSON. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Would it make more sense? I, I, I think the recommendation needs to go in, but would it make more sense to talk about the recommendation as being iJSON rather than JSON? Yeah, 
Yeah, so um, do, do we have a name for the JSON that is not IJSON? No, I don't think so. So as long as we talk about the default, I think IJSON is kind of the default. Yes. Okay, that, that's all the slides I had. Now we only have to find time to actually work all these issues. But we have a few things we can take to the mailing list. And uh, I think uh, we can still make a couple of uh, more steps forward to uh, closing. Uh, issues, uh, but we may not be all done before I go on vacation. Okay. That sounds good. Um, can Paul take care of some stuff while you're gone or not? Um, yeah, we, we have this interesting way of working where we really try to, to do a four eyes uh, policy. So um, Paul can do some things, uh, but I think we really want to, both of us to be present uh, before making some, some real progress. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we, we have... Uh, uh, the, the, this four eyes policy has gone very well, both in in the, the uh, development of 7049 and and, and the Cibolis, uh activity. So I think we should, should stick with that. Okay. So so um, yeah. So next meeting is cancelled unless someone screams now. I expect the next meeting to be cancelled. Um, so we will meet again in four weeks. And hope, hopefully by then, then we have a new version. <coughs> right. right. Or a, not a new version, but yeah, an update. Or pull request. Yeah, yes, yeah. But uh, we, we don't expect an update before you go for vacation. Then that will be a uh, um, um, unrealistic, I guess. What what is okay. unrealistic? That to to expect an update before uh, before you go on vacation. No, oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, okay. coming back from the uh, internet draft deadline for uh, Singapore, that that's on uh, November fourth. So the Singapore meeting the meeting is pretty late in the uh, year. November, yeah. Uh, so we, we do have a little bit more space, but uh, um, of course it doesn't I mean, really make sense to, to send out a uh, draft for working plus call uh, on the internet draft deadline. So uh, we probably want to do at least two weeks before that. Yeah, definitely. So the 23rd of October is the last interim before the cutoff date. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I guess that would also be the last um, if you want to have the working plus code before the cutoff. 23rd would work. Jim, Jim, when is it that you're going to be gone or not uh, available much? Um, it, uh, my random, it's, it's a random availability all the way through October. Okay. I mean, I'll have some time. To, I mean, I'll definitely make the calls. I'll have time to do some stuff. But yeah. Starting in October, I think, or could it be in September? It was, it's probably starts in September. But okay. It starts when the grapes start coming in. Yeah, I don't know when the grapes start coming in. So. Yeah, I don't either, so. <laughs> okay. When you do, please uh, let me know. So. Okay. Okay, so let's say like, uh, so uh, next, next meeting will be 25th of September. And hopefully we can progress and discuss what's the status of Cibor by then. And I assume we will have um, more update on the array tags as well with the um, ISG review. OK. Um, One minute early. <laughs> One minute. <laughs> Impressive. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for today. Bye-bye.